Good morning to everyone, authorities, professors, students, and all participants of the 23rd Media Ecology Convention. It's with great joy that I greet all on behalf of the student body of the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro. Welcome to South America, welcome to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro, and to our esteemed book, Rio. I hope you enjoy our academic space and lovely history of our city. I wish everyone an excellent meeting and a rich possibility of exchanges in the center of knowledge so important for our country, our renowned book field. Welcome, everybody. Now, now I call my group. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I deliver some opening remarks, I'd like to welcome to the table at the front some very important people here at Bukio. Uh, first, Dr. Jose Ricardo Bergman, uh, who is Vice President for Academic Affairs. I'd also like to welcome Dr. Augusto Cesar here, uh, who is the Vice Dean of the Center for Social Sciences. Oh. Did I get that wrong? <laughs> uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Luis Camilo Osorio, who is Vice Dean of the Center for Theology and Science. Thank you. And Dr. Giselle. And Giselle, I see. Um, and Dr. Giselle Ferreira, Chair of the Postgraduate Program in Education and Representative of the Organizing Committee. Please make yourself comfortable. Greetings and welcome to the 23rd Annual Convention of the Media Ecology Association. We are proud to present several days of plenaries, panels, and performances in the spirit of our community and its growing history of intellectual and artistic endeavors. My name is Mike Plue. I'm the Vice President of the Media Ecology Association and this year's program. Over the last several years, we've faced mounting troubles around the world, including economic and political turmoil, and an enduring pandemic that has undoubtedly touched all of our lives in one way or another. It may seem odd to present our convention theme celebration in the midst of such turmoil, but I assure you that the theme was not chosen frivolously. In fact, in times of great turmoil, it is important to acknowledge and reaffirm the bonds that tie us together in community. It is in celebration of our values and relationships that we find the strength to continue on, pursuing our many goals with vigor and determination. When Neil Postman described media ecologists as loving resistance fighters, I believe he intended to emphasize the sort of spirit that has made our community strong, effective, and enduring, even in trying times, perhaps especially in trying times. I would like to thank Dr. Adriana Braga for taking on the monumental task of planning and hosting our virtual convention last summer and for continuing her commitment in hosting this year's in-person event here at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro. This kind of effort is truly above and beyond the call. Our gracious hosts at Pukio have welcomed us here to convene our, convene our annual convention, becoming the first hosts in South America and indeed our first hosts in the Southern Hemisphere anywhere. The Media Ecology Association is very grateful for our Brazilian members, one of the largest groups of any nationality in our community. Um, before I introduce our guests here again for some opening remarks, I wanted to make sure that I uh, give thanks uh, to the interpreters who are students of the university's graduate course in conference interpreting. Caroline, Carolina uh, Camara, is that correct? Is that good? Okay. And Gustavo Vieira, uh, who are going to be doing some interpreting work, and we thank them very much for their effort. Here to represent Bukihio, we have a number of distinguished persons, and I'd like to invite them to greet you one by one, if I may. Uh, please welcome again Dr. Uh, Jose Ricardo Bergman, Vice President for Academic Affairs. 
Good morning, uh, Professor Michael, and our fellow media ecologists and friends. And on behalf of the Pontifical University, Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro, I would like to welcome you in our campus and say that we are honored to host this meeting, the 23rd annual meeting of the Media Ecology Association. For, for us, it's really an honor to, to have you here. I'd like to take this, this opportunity to with thanks the team that put this meeting together. And in the name of the university, I'd like to thank you for this, this effort and say that we wish you a, a nice meeting, a successful meeting, and that you enjoy our terms, our city. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Adam. And next, I'd like to invite some remarks from Dr. Luis Camilo Osorio, who is Vice Dean of the Center for Theology and Human Sciences. Thank you, Professor Michael. Thank you, Adriana, for the invitation. I'm here representing the Dean of the Human Science and Theology Center. And it's a pleasure to, to host this important meeting of the Media Ecology Association in Rio. It's the second time last year it was online because of the pandemic, and now it's this celebration of doing it all together. For the, the Humanity Center, Theology and Human Science Center, and the Social Science Center, which is the other center who's in a way taking part in this meeting, it's very important to have all these departments. For instance, from our center, we have philosophy, education, theology, design, education, all these departments together, students and professors. And this is, I think, what the university is about, to put all these different knowledges together and trying to compose a better media ecology. If last year it was dystopic futures, now we have to celebrate it. We are surviving in this dystopic present. So very welcome to be at Puki. Hope that you like the university, the atmosphere, all this, I would say, beautiful landscape of the university and the city. So welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, for the following remarks, we'll come from Dr. Giselle Ferreira, Chair of the Postgraduate Program in Education and Representative of the Organizing Committee. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I speak on behalf of the local organizing committee. Um, we wish collectively to uh, give you a very, very warm welcome to the 23rd Meeting Ecology Association Conference, which is taking place here in Puki, uh, as we logos to uh, say in Puki. Um, we have uh, worked uh, under the tireless and always enthusiastic leadership of Adrian, who you all know well. And uh, the team has involved all the various departments, including uh, the Department of Represented by Professor, Professor Edgar Lido, and uh, from the Department of Education, apart from myself, uh, Professor Rosario Duarte. Um, and also, we have a, a very important team of student volunteers who actually were the main people who made last year's event um, possible. And this year, they are again here and again present. And they will be easily identifiable by their lovely uh, t shirts. They will be here uh, around the campus, who will help you in the rooms during discussions if you have issues, technical issues, whatever, and also to point you to the facilities that are available on campus. And about the campus, I think it's worth saying that we are uh, very lucky to be on a rather unique place. And I would recommend, and I think most of the people who actually work here on a daily basis, would recommend that you explore. There are some really lovely, special, hidden 
um, corners and spots where you can um, just sit, take in the air or chat with other people. I mean, the intervals are being tight, but I think it's worth going back to see a little bit. And uh, well, I think that's it really from me mostly. And uh, I'm just a close wishing you very productive, uh, very interesting, and above all, very inspiring uh, discussions in the next few days. And in particular, to those of you who have come from further in the field, uh, we want to uh, welcome you to Rio and Buki, and we hope you have a very pleasant stay. And, uh, and I think that as a collective thing, I hope we want to create. Uh, some uh, new great uh, memories in the days to come. Thank you. And I'd like to make sure I thank everyone in the audience here uh, at the start, uh, because without you, none of it is possible. I'm uh, very grateful to everyone for your submissions, for your participation, for your friendly faces, and uh, I hope we have a wonderful a uh, few days together uh, and get to know each other much better. Um, it is now my great pleasure to call to order the proceedings of the 23rd Annual Convention of the Media Ecology Association, which will begin presently with a plenary session directed by Dr. Adriana Braga in this very room, where we'll learn a bit more about the Brazilian tradition of media ecology. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you all around the convention. Enjoy. Our first plenary session uh, was an important contribution, I think, to this historic convention. Um, to the extent that we can say there's a Brazilian school of media ecology, there's a history that goes along with it. And um, what a way to begin uh, by learning a bit more about the history of our hosts here at Bukihio, and in particular, the kind of scholarship that media ecologists in Brazil have engaged in for years and years. And what better person to tell us a bit more about this than Professor Dr. Adriana Braga, who is our Media Ecology Association president and uh, uh, probably the foremost expert in the connection between our community and the Brazilian community. And uh, it's a thrill and a pleasure to welcome her here to talk to you a bit more about this fascinating topic. Adriana. Dear authorities, dear colleagues, and dear friends, on behalf of the Media College Association, I would like, in the person of our magnificent director, here represented by authorities here, to express our thanks for the support offered by Cookie Heave to make this long awaited meeting come true. I would like to thank my precious team, without which nothing would be possible. <clears throat> Instead of taking on a difficult task of summarizing the past, present, and future of the media college in Brazil, as Mike asked me to do, <laughs> I think it would be a bit more helpful if I were to speak a bit about my own personal experience with media college in Brazil. After all, in many ways, the history of media college in Brazil is tied in to my own life history and my development within Brazilian academic institution. For many years, media ecology was totally unknown in Brazil, while the ideas of Marshall McLuhan were greeted either with skepticism or outright hostility. In 1967, three years after its publication in English, McLuhan's understanding media was translated into Portuguese by Bessu Pignatari, a man who represented the vanguard of concrete poetry and communication studies in Brazil. But McLuhan ran into a brick wall. It seems like few authors in communication theory had a bunkier reception to their work than McLuhan. At that time, those who weren't political militants, outspoken in their opposition to the military dictatorship, were easily uh, dismissed as allies of the uh, death flow regime. Some even went as far as linking McLuhan with Milton Friedman and the detested free market economists of the Chicago School. 
Uh, my first contact with media ecology was in 2003. I was participating in an IAMCR seminar in Porto Alegre, in the south of Brazil, when I had the good fortune to meet a media ecologist from New York, from New York, named Sue Barnes. Right after my presentation at the conference, Sue came up to me and announced, the work that you do is media ecology. In the same year, uh, my PhD supervisor, aware of my research interests, suggested that I take a careful look at the works of Marshall McLuhan. At the time, my knowledge about McLuhan went a little beyond the famous quote, the medium is the message. I was, uh, as I studied McLuhan, it was a badly needed breath of fresh air. In McLuhan, I found a way of ending the identity crisis that came up in my doctorate research project. A few years later, 2005, I invited Sue Barnes to be a presenter in a seminar that I organized in Portugal. This European seminar resulted in a publication of a book entitled CMC, Identities and Gender, uh, including four chapters written by media ecologists. In the same year, I attended my first MEA conference held in New York City. The sense of academic freedom and the spirit of collegiality that characterizes media ecologists fascinated me. Immediately, I felt a sharp contrast with the rigid disciplinary approach which has surrounded my early development as a scholar. Sue Barn was right, I was very much media ecologist. The following year, I attended the MEA meeting in Mexico City, where my thesis on computer-mediated femininity was honored with the prestigious Harold Diniz Award. Uh, the following year, I was elected as a member at large of the MEA and thereby became part of the board of directors in 2009. Since that time, I have done my best to promote the ideas and perspectives of media ecology here in Brazil. In 2011, the centennial of McLuhan's birth gave rise to celebrations all across the globe. In that year, I was working as chief editor in the largest Brazilian journal in communication, Boss, and we released a special issue called McLuhan 100 Years After. That included an impactful test by Lance Strait called The Fall of Nations and articles of other media colleges. In addition, an interview with the translator of Brazilian uh, 1967 uh, edition of Understanding Media, the poet Bessio Bignatari. It was clear that the ideas of media ecology were beginning to take wings in Brazil. Harold Inley's classic The Bias of Communication was translated into Portuguese and published in 2011 with the title O Vies da Comunicação. Uh, in 2011, uh, 12, I was granted uh, for an unprecedented academic initiative, an academic tour in many parts of Brazil to promote the recent publication of Robert Logan's book, O Que É, que é Informação, What's Information, which I had the pleasure of translating into Portuguese for a Brazilian readership. The book was launched in four different Brazilian state capitals. Bob Logan's charm as a media ecologist and his experience as an early collaborator with Marshall McLuhan resulted in appearances on TV and full pages of coverage in the principal newspaper of major Brazilian cities. After a long silence, the ideas of McLuhan were beginning to come pivotal and the least unavoidable to the study of communication in Brazil. The transforming power of electronic media was just too obvious to overlook or marginalize. Despite the increasing interest in media ecological ideas, I believe that was a lack of a grounding test for, uh, that could orient media ecology research in Brazil. So I invited, uh, therefore, Lance Strait and Paul Levinson to co-author with me some reference material for the field of communication in Brazil. <laughs> Uh, there were many challenges along the way. How would we write a co-author text in Portuguese if two of the co-authors didn't speak it? 
uh, my responsibility was the only, uh, as the only native speaker was great. And I thank the trust that my colleagues had in me and the work I had on me. After two years of hard work, the book Introdução à Ecologia das Mídias, Introduction to Media College, was published in 2019 and shows a reflection on a broad theoretical and conceptual genealogy which constantly dialogues with contemporary reality. The media ecological approach is insert, inserted in a broader a cultural and intellectual context, and the book brings to the debate authors from other fields who, uh, who are also interested in the questions uh, that brought by Mahu. In 2020, following on the success of the book by Strait, Braga, and Lettison, I created and taught uh, the first postgraduate course program in media ecology in Brazil, called uh, Introduction to Media Ecology, Tec uh, Technology, and Culture. The program brought in postgraduate students from many fields of knowledge, exposing the clear interdisciplinarity, uh, the interdisciplinary nature of media ecology. The questions brought forward by students of philosophy, education, design, sociology, performing arts, law, and literature made the program exciting, with the students and experienced researchers fully committed, thirsty for the understanding that, media that a mediological view could offer. The course was taught online, given the pandemic circumstances, but that makes the participation of students from other parts of Brazil easier, gathering a class of unusual size for a Brazilian postgraduate program. The positive reviews of the participants by the end of the program, uh, the gratitude that that class expressed for the knowledge acquired gave me one of my most thankful and happiest moments in my academic career. With the mountain interest in the ideas of national Lugan, Bill Postman, and the perspectives of media college, it was time to bring the MBA to Brazil. At the 17th MBA convention in Bologna in 2016, the idea of finally having a meeting in Rio de Janeiro was brought, this was brought up in a conversation after a night accompanied by good wine in a pleasant mythical medieval city. In July of 2021, uh, with the great help of my colleagues, colleagues Rosaria and Edgar, as well as a great team of students and collaborators, I coordinated last year's MEA convention online. It was a great event with hundreds of submitted papers and an extensive parallel program. But an online Zoom conference is not really bringing the MEA to Brazil. Motivated by the deep desire to have an in-person convention in Brazil and Rio de Janeiro, we broke several conditions and, for the first time, repeated the institution to host the convention. Also, for the first time, the president is also coordinating the convention. So, here we are in Latin America, in Rio de Janeiro, in the very heart of Brazil. Uh, I would like to show my happiness in hosting MEA 22 in Rio in Pukiri Pilotis, a highly symbolic place. Pukiri Pilotis witnesses Brazilian history's most difficult moments, being a place of resistance to, the, to dictatorship where Jesuits, pre, where Jesuit priests welcomed and sheltered communists, a true sanctuary for freedom and, of thinking and speech, even in the darkest of times. I would like to conclude my remarks here by thank you, by thank you all for coming so many miles to spend some moments with us here in the Southern Hemisphere, as well as our Brazilian colleagues, colleagues that also traveled so many miles to meet. May these moments uh, be good moments filled with conversation, laughter, music, new friends, and new understandings. I would like also to emphasize that my perspective as a Brazilian scholar and Brazilian woman. Media ecology has been important to me in my education and evolution as a public intellectual. Thank you, Subar. But even more, I am convinced that media ecology 
has a central role to play in the historical moments that now confronts us and shakes the very earth beneath our feet. It's important to spread this perspective of mythology, humanistic, eclectic, and open, as it, uh, as it operates as an academic anti-space, a necessary counterbalance to these times dominated by intellectual neoliberalism present in the notorious blanket of academic productivity. In these days of institutional rankings and public and publication scores, to treat science as a collective achievement and academic discussion as a way to wisdom is not only a divergence, but a truly subversive practice. I'm very proud to be part of this movement and a contributor, contributor to this moment in history. Thank you very much. Andrea, do you think we could ask you a few questions? Would that be okay? Yeah. Yeah? I've been very curious about the kind of topics uh -huh. that your students and your colleagues are interested in that connect with media ecology. As we begin, uh, it may be useful for us to have some, uh, some information about this so that we can have more conversations as, as, we, as we go. Uh, thank you for asking that, Mike. Uh, uh, it's true, my, my students are so fascinated with ecology, and they are uh, including this perspective in their research. For example, uh, last year, Jadina, who opened this, this uh, table to the, to the, uh, this morning, she was the recipient of, for the top student paper last year, because she made a uh, uh, her um, object of study is godly wood. Godly wood is uh, like a rock, uh, Hollywood by, uh, for God, you know, godly wood. It's, uh, uh, I guess in YouTube, a uh, lot of films to, uh, uh, to pedag uh, a kind of pedag pedagogy for women, evangelical women, <laughs> that those films do. And then she applied a tetragic uh, theory to understand that. And it was brilliant. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, for example, uh, Marcel is there. Marcel was my student. He is from the uh, Department of Philosophy. But uh, he is working with propaganda in the loose guy, and he loose the word. And he is very happy to find Jack and Lou to uh, organize and develop his research. <laughs> uh, Marina, I think Marina is not here today. Marina uh, is uh, working with uh, uh, her. Uh, the title of our paper in this, uh, in this convention is To Be or Not to Be. It's, uh, it's something, uh, uh, it's, uh, um, they try to be or not to be, to be or not to be. I will explain that later for you because it's a long story. But her research is about uh, the way the Amerindian, uh, American indigenous people, Organ, uh, be or, uh, organize them their agenda uh, 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 through social media. So uh, she is using this to make a proposal for an approach of media policy, a new approach of media policy. So I, I think uh, it's a lot, there are lots of other words that I can remember now, but uh, this is the evidence that how a uh, media policy uh, approach is being productive for my students and for, and everybody when uh, you don't know nothing about media ecology and have the first experience, they it's the same reaction. They be fascinated with the, the, the brand new view of, of the world. So I think it's a very good, it's a very welcome, and uh, we are doing we are doing a um, good job there. Uh, with all these students uh, approaching and participating and sending proposals for the convention, and I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, I would also point to 
in the program that you've received, any of the panels that are shaded in green are Portuguese language panels. And we received so many submissions uh, for Portuguese presentations, both from colleagues and students. And I think what you'll see is there's a variety of different topics that have come out that may be of interest. So, uh, you know, it's a wonderful experience to maybe try out some of the Portuguese language panels to see uh, what, what kinds of topics are being discussed. Yes, and I, I, I told some uh, uh, research about my students, but uh, in, for example, philosophy and education, there's the same uh, movement. <laughs> I have my, my own experience, but I can see in, in around Brazil as well. We can see, for example, in the south of Brazil, in a federal university there, in Uspi, in Sao Paulo, there is a, a, a guy there that works with media ecology. And uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, Porto Alegre, and Federal de Santa Maria, there are big uh, a group working with that. So, uh, and the, the book is selling very well because uh, it's a, a reference, a good reference for the developing of the research in Brazil. That's wonderful. I wonder if anyone has any questions or comments, Roger? Tom, oh, go ahead. Trina, just to maybe put it into a little more perspective, um, what's the, just maybe to put it in a little wider perspective for us about uh, the study of media in Brazil, is there a larger paradigm or framework um, in the United States, you know, we sort of are lumped into media studies, and, and then there's, of course, media literacy, media education, there's the whole tradition of communication coming out of rhetoric, right? when uh, English language education split into literature and rhetoric. And so those are like the dominant paradigm in, in, to which we fit in the United States. But what's, what are the dominant paradigms or the dominant paradigm in Brazil? Uh, the, uh, mainly people from communication, the uh, studies that uh, is more uh, likely to, to, to appropriate for this, uh, Session. But I think I can see in, in those uh, convention in the last year and this year, I saw many, for example, the theology of uh, the Department of Theology uh, made two panels uh, 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 bring back the Arnold Chardin to discuss media college. It was great. And, and, and I can see this is spreadable in other areas. But there is a, a, a in communication. I feel that they uh, they have a different uh, vision for media college. For example, um, when we say about media college, we are talking about the whole stuff. But in Brazil, they used to use uh, misuse media college just to uh, characterize the the. the the pool of me of media of uh, communication uh, media, but it's not only that. And they call it media college, but the, the radio, TV, internet. This is media college. So my effort is to uh, open this vision to don't uh, don't lose these people, but uh, to, uh, uh, attract them for more uh, discussion about that because it's very limited if you think. Uh, only as an ecosystem of media, strictly, strictly. So uh, my work in every single uh, conference that they invited me to come, I have to uh, to explain this misunderstanding uh, to open it up. Uh, and, and then and, uh, Mark Lewin was uh, for for the last generation. Mark Lewin is not good because. This relationship with the dictatorship, this misunderstanding. So we have lots to do to uh, standardize some uh, just a, a core of uh, a broad theoretical approach to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to speak the same language on <laughs> college. Mm -hmm. So that's my effort, and, and that's uh, 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 in addition we have, for example, media in Brazil is translated as medium. So it's disastrous. Because when you put in Google Translator, media, in Portuguese, are media, the medium. And media is plural. 
So uh, this makes lots of confusion because you can't understand uh, media quality if you put all media in, uh, <laughs> in the same basket. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm trying to clarify to uh, when I have a big conference because they invite me a lot in other places. And I, I use that like a mantra. <laughs> I say, oh, media is plural. Medium is singular and different. And, and about the, and the ecosystem, this ecosystem, the, the, the both uh, most problem for me in this understanding of media, you know, ecology, what is ecology, but. Not if it sounds a bit like the problem that we frequently have where people talk about the media, the media, the media. Yeah. As a singular yeah. entity that uh, talking even about media. Yes, yeah. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's not good for us. No, it's not good for us. Uh, are there other questions or comments for Adrian? Thank you very much, Adriana. Thank you very much to all of you.